Hi, today we're going to talk about describing matter. So we're going to talk about what kinds of properties are used to describe matter. What are elements and how do they relate to compounds? What are the properties of mixtures? You have probably already heard the word of matter many times. Think about how often you hear the phrase as a matter of fact or hey, what's the matter? In science, this word has a scientific meaning. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. All the stuff around you is matter, and you are matter too. Air, plastic, metal, wood, glass, paper, and cloth, all of these are matter. Properties of matter. Even though air and plastic are both matter, no one has to tell you they are different materials. Matter can have many different properties or characteristics. Materials can be hard or soft, rough or smooth, hot or cold, liquid, solid, or gas. Some materials catch fire easily, but others do not burn. Chemistry is the study of the properties of matter and how matter changes. The properties and changes of any type of matter depends on its makeup. Some types of matter are substances and some are not. In chemistry, a substance is a single kind of matter that is pure, meaning that it has a specific makeup or a composition and a, set of specific, and a specific set of properties. For example, table salt has the same composition and properties no matter where it comes from, seawater or salt mine. On the other hand, think about the batter for blueberry muffins. It contains flour, butter, sugar, salt, blueberries, and other ingredients shown in figure one. We'll go back to that. Well, some of the ingredients, ingredients such as sugar and salt, are pure substances. The muffin batter is not. It consists of several ingredients that can vary with every recipe. Okay? So here's our pure substances. Table salt, table sugar, baking soda. Those are all pure substances. Not substances. Flour baking powder, milk, eggs, and food are not pure substances. Every form of matter has two kinds of properties, physical and chemi chemical properties. Okay, A physical property of oxygen is that it has gas at room temperature. A chemical property of oxygen is that it reacts with iron to form rust. You will, need more, you will learn more about physical and chemical properties in the next two pages. Okay, these are physical properties. The physical property of matter can help you identify and classify matter in its different forms. Okay, so we have ice at above zero degrees C. Icicle solids will change to a liquid. So it's changing from solid to liquid. The texture and color, bumpy texture and bright colors are physical properties of this hungry um, chameleon. Flexibility, metal becomes becomes a shiny flexible toy when shaped into a flat wire and coil. Okay, so physical properties of matter. A physical property is a characteristic of a pure substance that can be observed without change, gene it into another substance. For example, a physical property of water is that it freezes at a temperature of zero degrees C. When liquid water freezes, it changes to solid ice, but it is still water. Hardness, texture, and color are some other physical properties of matter. When you describe a substance as a solid, a liquid, or a gas, you are starting, you're stating another physical property. Whether or not a substance dissolves in water is a physical property, too. Sugar will dissolve in water, but iron will not. Stainless steel is mostly iron, but you can stir sugar into your tea with a stainless steel spoon. Physical properties can be used to classify matter. For example, true properties of metals or luster and the ability to conduct heat and electricity. Some metals, such as iron, can be attracted to a magnet. Metals are also flexible, which means they can be bent into shapes without breaking. They can also be pressed into flat sheets and pulled into thin, long, thin wire. Other materials, such as glass, brick, and concrete, will break into small pieces if you try to bend them or press them into thinner objects. So a physical property, it means that they might change the way it looks, but it's still the exact same thing. So water, for example, if you freeze it, it's solid, but it's still water. Okay? Metal. You can form it into a ring, so it looks like, it, so it's a ring, but it's still a metal. There's nothing that's changed in it, okay? So physical properties means, it's physical 
shape may change, but nothing on the inside of it changes. Chemical properties. The chemical properties of different forms of matter cannot be observed without changing a substance into a new substance. So chemical properties, we're, move, we're making a new substance. Flammability. Wood fuels, fuels a fire, producing heat, gases, and ash. So here's the thing. If I freeze water, I can thaw it out, and it becomes water again. So ice can go back and forth. Water, ice, ice to water. If I burn a log, I cannot get the log back. So it has actually changed its um, substance. Okay, It's now ash. It can't become a wood again. So that makes it a chemical property. Okay, new, okay, gas produced during baking creates spaces in the freshly made bread. Okay, so it's produced gas. So I can't make those, I can't reverse it back to something else. Iron can form rust, turning one, turning a once shiny car into a crumbly relic. So once it rusts, I can't put it back into shiny metal. I would have to actually replace it with a new piece of metal. So therefore, the rust cannot be reversed. So it is a chemical property. Unlike physical properties, my some properties can't be observed just by looking or touching a substance. A chemical property is the characteristic of a pure substance that describes its ability to change into different substances. To absorb to observe the chemical property of the substance you must try to change it to another substance. Like physical properties, chemical properties are used to classify substances. For example, a chemical property of methane natural gas is that it can catch fire and burn into air. When it burns, it combines with oxygen in the air and forms a new substance, water and carbon dioxide. Burning or, burning or flammability is a chemical property of methane, as well as the substance in wood or gasoline. One chemical property of iron is that it combines slowly with oxygen in air to form a different substance, rust. Silver will react with sulfur in the air to form tarnish. In contrast, the chemical property of gold is that it does not react easily with oxygen or sulfur. Bakers may use a chemical property of the substances in bread dough. With the help of yeast added to the dough, some of the substances can produce a gas, which causes the bread to rise. Okay, examples of elements. So, some elements have familiar pro user, have familiar uses. Many elements are solid at room temperature, but some are gases or liquids. Elements. What is matter made of? What is one kind of matter different from another kind of matter? Educated people in ancient Greece debated these questions. Around 450 BC, a Greek philosopher named and Podicles proposed that all matter was made of four elements, air, earth, fire, and water. He thought that all other matter was combined of two or more of these four elements. The idea of four elements was so convincing that people believed it for more than 2,000 years. What is an element? In the late 1600s, experiments by the earliest chemists began to show that matter was made up of many more than four elements. Now scientists know that all matter in the universe is made up of slightly more than a hundred different substances, still called elements. An element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into any other substance by chemical or physical means. Elements are simple as substances. Each element can be defined by its specific physicals, physical and chemical properties. You are already familiar with some elements. Aluminum, which is made to make foil and outdoor furniture, furniture, is an element. Pennies are made from zinc, another element. Then the pennies are given a coating of copper, which uh, so an element, which you breathe, you inhale the elements oxygen and nitrogen, which make up 99% of the Earth's atmosphere. Elements often represented by one or two layer symbols, such as C for carbon, O for oxygen, and H for hydrogen. Particles of elements. Atoms, which is the smallest possible piece of matter. Suppose you would keep tearing a piece of aluminum foil in half over and over again. Would you reach a point where you have the smallest possible piece of aluminum? The answer is yes. Since the early 1800s, scientists have known that all matter is made of atoms. An atom is a basic particle from which all elements are made. 
different elements have different properties because their atoms are different. Experiments in the early 1900s show that an atom is made of even smaller parts. Look at the diagram of carbon atom in figure 5. The atom has positively charged center or nucleus that contains smaller particles. It is surrounded by a cloud of negative charge. You will learn more about the structure of an atom in chapter 3. When atoms combine, atoms of most elements have the ability to combine with other atoms. When atoms combine, they form a chemical bond, which is a force of attraction between two atoms. In many cases, atoms combine to form larger particles called molecules, groups of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. A molecule of water, for example, consists of oxygen atom chemically bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Two atoms of the same element can also combine to form a molecule. Oxygen molecules of two oxygen atoms. Figure 6 shows mod models of three molecules. You'll see similar models throughout this book. Okay, you have water, we have oxygen and two hydrogen. You have oxygen gas, which is two oxygens. And you have carbon dioxide. You have one carbon and two oxygen atoms. Compounds. Okay. Oops. okay. Compounds. All matter is made up of elements, but most elements in nature are found combined with other elements. A compound is a pure substance made of two or more elements chemically combined in a set ratio. A compound by, may be represented by a chemical formula which shows the elements in the compound and the ratio of atoms. For example, part of the gas you exhale, exhale is carbon dioxide. The chemical formula is CO2. The number 2 below the symbol for oxygen tells you the ratio of carbon to oxygen is 1 to 2. If there is no number after the element symbol, the number 1 is understood. If a different ratio of carbon atoms and oxygen atoms are seen in a formula, you have, different, you have a different compound. For example, Carbon monoxide, a gas produced in car engines, has a formula CO. Here, the ratio of carbon atoms to oxygen atoms is 1 to 1. When elements are chemically bonded, combined, they form compounds having properties that are different from those of the uncombined elements. For example, the element sulfur is a yellow solid, and the element silver is a shiny metal. But when you have sulf silver and sulfur combined, they form a compound called sulfur, su silver sulfide. You can, you would call this, you would, sorry. For example, the element sulfur is yellow solid and the element silver is a shiny metal. But when silver and sulfur combined, they form a compound called silver sulfide. AG2S. You would call this black compound tarnish. Table salt C12H22O11 is a compound made of elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The sugar crystals do not resemble the gases oxygen and hydrogen or the black carbon you see in charcoal. Okay? So, the snail shell is mostly made out of calcium carbonate, a compound made of calcium carbon and oxygen. This is calcium carbon and oxygen so it's, it's neat when you look at all of these and you find that it actually makes this kind of shell mixtures elements and compounds are pure substances but most of the materials you see every day are not instead they are mixtures and mixtures made of two or more substances elements compounds are both they are together in the same place but are not chemically combined mixtures differ from compounds in two ways each substance is a mixture, keeps its individual properties. Also, the parts of mixtures are not combined in a set ratio. Think of a handful of moist soil, such as the one as figure 8. If you look at the soil through a magnifying, magnifying glass, you will find particles of sand, bits of clay, maybe even pieces of decaying plants. If you squeeze the soil, you may force out a few drops of water. A so sample of soil from different places probably won't contain the same amount of sand, clay, or water. Heterogeneous mixtures. A mixture can be heterogeneous or homogeneous. 
In a heterogeneous mixture, you will see different parts. The damp soil described above is one example of a heterogeneous mixture. So is a salad. Just think of how easy it is to see the pieces of lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumbers and other ingredients that put to, the cooks put together in countless ways and amounts. Homogeneous mixtures. The substance in a homogeneous mixture are so evenly mixed that you cannot see the different parts. Suppose you stir a teaspoon of sugar into a glass of water. After stirring for a little while, the sugar dissolves, and you can no longer see crystals of sugar in the water. You know the sugar is in there, though, because the sugar solution tastes sweet. A solution is an example of a homogeneous mixture. A solution does not have to be a liquid, however. Air is a solution of nitrogen gas and oxygen gas, plus small amounts of a few other gases. A solution can even be a solid. Brass is a solution of the elements copper and zinc. Separating mixtures. The different physical properties of iron, sulfur, and table salt help in separating the mixtures of substances. Mixtures. Iron filing, sulfur, table salt, and comp compose a mixture. Iron is removed by a magnet. Water is added, dissolving the salt, but not the sulfur, and then we can filter it out. Separating mixtures. Compounds and mixtures differ in yet another way. A com ca compound can be different, difficult to separate into its elements, but a mixture is usually easy to separate into its components because each component keeps its own properties. Figure 10 illustrates a few of the ways you can use the properties of mixture compounds to separate them out. This methods include magnets, attract, magnetic attraction, filtration, distillation, and evaporation. And fig in the figure, iron filings, powdered sulfur, and table start salts start off mixed in a pile. Iron is attracted to a magnet, while sulfur and salt are not. Salt can be dissolved in water, but sulfur will not dissolve. So pouring a mixture of salt, sulfur, and water through a paper filter removes the sulfur. Now the remaining solution can be distilled. In distillation, a liquid can be boiled. Components of the mixture that have different boiling points will boil away at different temperatures. As most of the water boils in figure 10, it is cooled and then collected in a flask. Once the remaining salt water is allowed to dry or evaporate, only the salt is left. So this is the evaporation. It's boiled, then it cools through a condensing tube, and then you can collect the water. So we've officially separated out water, iron filings, table salt, and sulfur. Okay, that is the end of our lesson today. Your assignment is figure one assessment along with the math practice. See you next time. Bye.